challenge is that if you go from the the world of vibration analysis to the world of reliability um, suddenly there's all kinds of jargon there's all sorts of techniques we can take advantage of and i've listed some of them up there you know reliability centered maintenance fault, uh, failure modes effects and criticality analysis and so on and so forth and so on and so the the challenge then is it's just overwhelming it's just um there's, there's so many things you're supposed to do, so many things in the maintenance department, in the engineering department, the procurement department, the spares management uh, groups, and then condition monitoring and reliability analysis and, and everything. There's, there's a lot to do. And, you know, my personal frustration is that most people, particularly after just a little bit of training, kind of understand what what is needed you know most people understand that you need all those things and you need good communications you need you know the right culture and and leadership it's not a question of knowing what is needed um and it's not a problem with people in reliability having the right passion or intelligence to make it happen the trouble is they're thwarted by their co-workers and managers. You know, you don't have everyone on the same page or everyone pulling together, everyone um, understanding how everyone benefits by working in a reliable plant. I mean, I'm sure you all know a reliable plant is a safer place to work, less impact on the environment. Um, it, it, it means the company can produce the product or produce or provide the service that is intended. Uh, the, the business will succeed. It won't shut down. It will be able to pay proper salaries and provide benefits and so on and so forth. Um, but unfortunately, what happens is, you know, on the one hand, people are confused about how to make a reliability program work. Um, and they try to do it all by themselves. They believe, well, I have been, uh, I am a reliability engineer, and therefore it's my job to make this plant reliable. And you're dealing with all these other people who just don't get it, don't believe in it, don't see it as their jobs, and you are always fighting an uphill battle. You just it's just so hard when you take it from that from that insular position from that position of saying i'm in the reliability group and it's my responsibility or our responsibility to make this work and so even though you may be aware of all of those little acronyms and techniques and so on i had a couple of slides back actually trying to make it work is really difficult and so what is so very common is that while you are trying to make improvements, failures keep occurring. And each day you end the day saying, oh, I did intend to make some improvements in places, but we just got caught up with another breakdown, another problem, another problem. And the end of the week comes and you're, you're still being unable to make any headway. And the end of the month comes and the end of the year comes and and it's still just you know the frustrations the frustrations of not being able to make progress um you know from my perspective where i see some of the the key problems with reliability programs is number one that inability to break out of the reactive maintenance cycle of doom, to actually stop pieces of equipment from failing. You know, because we can, we can use condition monitoring and that helps in that situation. We can at least better plan for the corrective maintenance that's needed. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, we really need to stop equipment from failing. Um, but unless we make a series of changes in a lot of parts of our operation, in maintenance, in operations, in engineering, in procurement, and so on, 
unless we make those changes, we will just keep suffering the failures and we can we can lessen the impact of those failures by being very good at vibration analysis and the other condition monitoring technologies. But it is very difficult to go beyond that unless we really have a plan. And even when we start to make some progress, it's so common for management to lose patience that they've invested in this reliability improvement program and they don't see the benefits. Or the opposite happens where you start, you're halfway successful with your condition monitoring program and management don't see so many failures and they feel like the problem's been solved. Well, why do we need a reliability improvement group if we're not having all these emergencies? Because we are seeing the problems coming and because we have implemented planning and scheduling and proper spares management, the impact of those failures is reduced and so they, they lose patience. So we must address that issue. Um, you know, the it all depends on your measure of, of success. But I see a lot of programs that call themselves reliability improvement programs, but really they're mostly doing condition monitoring. And it does improve the dependability and the reliability of production and operations. It is a good thing for sure. It's it's worthy, um, it's, it's valuable. Um, but as I'm trying to point out, I guess there's more that, that we can do. There is more that we can do. But then the other thing that happens too is that we end up with, we're just doing a little bit here and a little bit there. We, we hear about planning and scheduling, we do a little bit about that. We hear about RCM when we try to come up with an asset strategy. We, we do a bit of root cause analysis, but probably never really see it through to the end and, and re remove the root cause. Yeah, you know, there's just a, a, a number of things going on and we just do what we can do when we can do it. But for all the other reasons, um, we don't really have success.